Hey everybody, it's me Liz Hicks and today I'm going to share with you how to make these gorgeous little crepe flowers. Now these crepe flowers are made just by using white party crepe, uh, your favorite colors of Glimmer Mist. For this, these flowers I actually use Deep Plum, Black Cherry, and Frozen Lake. Uh, Craft and photo tape by Scrapbook Adhesives. This is an old packaging, but their new packaging is actually a little bit bigger with 81 feet. Um, and your favorite embellishments to jazz up the middles. What I've done already is misted some crepe paper. So you can see how beautiful Glimmer Mist takes to just some plain old white party crepe. I have three different colors here to work with. And what I did is I actually just went ahead and saturated, misted all three of the pieces different colors, and I heated them to go ahead and dry it. Now you want to be careful not to heat it too much because it will burn. And you'll probably see that in certain aspects where um, I actually did burn it. Um, you can cut it off if you do burn it, or if you want it burned, then you know just go ahead and add more. I'm going to go ahead and take this frozen lake piece, and I'm going to take uh, craft and photo tape again by scrapbook pieces by 3L. And I'm going to lay out probably about 24 inches. That looks about right. And you can also repeat too if you want to. Now what Craft and Photo Tape is, it's actually a really nice um, thick double-sided adhesive. So it doesn't, what I like about it is that it actually, you can pick it up and reuse it and kind of move it around because it's more of a, kind of like a woven material as opposed to just um, kind of like tape. It more, it has kind of like a weave to it. So it makes it a little bit more durable. I'm going to take the protective backing off and then I'm going to go ahead and take my crepe and I'm going to put it uh, misted side up. I'm just going to go ahead and run it across and just give a little pucker here and there. I don't need to get too much of a ruffle going because I'm going to really concentrate on my ruffle when I put it on to my project. But what I want to do is just give it a little bit of a ruffle so that it doesn't have to look completely even. And I'm trying to keep the edge right up against the adhesive so that my bloom stays consistently the same length. And since I am running out of adhesive there, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Normally I would just rip it, but I want to have that versatility on the end if I need to. All right, so now that I have this little ruffle, another cool thing too, if you didn't want to make flowers, you could easily just gather that up onto your craft and photo tape, pick it up and then put it onto a project. Or if you wanted to put it behind something, you would put your craft and photo tape down, then put your misted side facing down and do your ruffle, and then pick it up and put it behind something and then all that pretty little glimmery goodness would show. Now what I'm gonna do, and this is where the craft and photo tape comes in really handy, is I'm actually just going to go ahead and pick up my whole little street, strip of streamer here. See that cute little ruffle? And you could easily just take this and gather it behind a project or gather it around a project, gather it around a title. It doesn't have to be a flower, but it just shows you a really quick and easy way to get that ruffled look that's so popular. And what I'm gonna do is just gather my ruffle around just a really cheap little piece of cardboard. I think this was like the divider in some pots or pans or something that we got. Anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and take this little piece of cardboard and gather my adhesive. And this is where I'm going to really put the effort into making sure that my uh, adhesive buckles to make that little ruffle. And what's cool is that even though the adhesive gets stuck, I can still like pick it up and move it around. It's that sturdy to where I can just keep moving it around if I need to. And you basically just keep doing that until you get tired, until you get the effect that you like, or until you run out of crepe paper. And you can keep building it in closer and closer to make it more of a of a puckery look so that it actually looks a little bit more layered. There we go. So there's the little bloom there. I can easily trim this off. 
trim it down, kind of slant it so that it looks a little bit more evenly. Trim the other end, the start end. And what's cool too is that if you find that one of your ruffles is like totally longer than the other, you can just trim it to size. And what I did actually with these little guys is that I uh, misted some Prima lace and then another cute little Prima um, flower in there. So that's where the deep plum and the black cherry came in. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Also, this here um, is actually made not out of crepe paper, but just paper towel. You can see here that I have all of these paper towels that I have used um, and misted. I could easily take these, rip them into little strips. This is actually, this flower here is actually straight off of this paper towel where I just cut it right up cut a portion that I liked. And what's cool about the paper towel is that it actually, you know, if you get the good kind, they're actually double ply, so you get both misty on the front and the back. So it kind of takes care of a two-in-one thing. But yeah, it gives it a totally different look because it has that kind of uh, little bubbly look to help absorb anything that you spill. But in this case, it absorbed glimmer mist really nicely. And yeah, so you get a totally different look, but it's what you've already used, what you would normally just throw away. Um, I use my paper towels to either clean up after I've misted or to put down on my misting mat and then mist on top of just so that it catches any excess mist. So yeah, just a really nice resourceful way of showing you how to get the biggest bang for your buck with your glimmer mist. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions, again, just email me at primadonnaliz at yahoo.com. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.